The National Library of China, simplified Chinese, Zhang Guo Guo Jia Tu Shu Guan, traditional Chinese, Zhang Guo Guo Jia Tu Shu Guan, Pinyin, Zhang Guo Guo Jia Tu Shu Guan, or NLC in Beijing, is the National Library of the People's Republic of China. With a collection of over 35 million items, it is the largest library in Asia and one of the largest in the world. It holds the largest collections of Chinese literature and historical documents in the world. The forerunner of the National Library of China, the Imperial Library of Peking, Jing Shi Tu Shu Guan, Jing Shi Tu Shu Guan, was founded on the 9th of September 1909 by the government of the Qing Dynasty. It was first formally opened after the Xinhai Revolution in 1912. In 1916, the library received depository library status. In July 1928, its name was changed to National Piping Library and was later changed to the National Library. History Background The earliest Chinese references to Western-style public libraries were by Lin Zexu in the Sizhou Ji, Si Zhou Ji 1839 and Wei Yuan in the Illustrated Treatise on the Maritime Kingdoms 1st ed. 1843, both of which were translations from Western books. In the late 19th century, in response to several military defeats against Western powers, the government of the Qing Dynasty 1644-1912 sent several missions abroad to study Western culture and institutions. Several members of the first Chinese diplomatic mission, which sold to the United States, England, France, and other countries from 1111 to 1870, recorded their views of Western libraries, noting that they attracted a large number of readers. Journalist Liang Qichao (1873–1929), who became a prominent exiled intellectual after the failure of the Hundred Days Reform in 1898, wrote about the Boston Public Library and the University of Chicago Library, praising their openness to the public and the virtue of readers who did not steal the books that had been lent to them. Dai Hongxi, Dai Hongxi, a member of another Qing mission sent abroad to study modern constitutions, noted the efficacy of book borrowing at the Library of Congress. Topic. Foundation In 1906, the governor of Hunan province Pang Hongshu memorialized to the throne to announce he had completed preparations for the creation of a provincial library in Changsha. In 1908 and 1909, high officials from the provinces of Fengtian, Shandong, Shaanxi, Zhejiang and Yunnan petitioned the court asking for permission to establish public libraries in their respective jurisdictions. In response, on 2 May 1909, the Qing Ministry of Education announced plans to open libraries in every province of the empire. On 9 September 1909, Zhang Zedong, a longtime leader of the self strengthening movement who had been viceroy of Huguang and was now serving on the powerful Grand Council, memorialized to request the foundation of a library in China's capital. Foundation of the library was approved by imperial edict that same day. The institution was originally called the Imperial Library of Peking or Metropolitan Library, Jing Shi Tu Shu Guan, Jing Shi Tu Shu Guan. Lu Xuan and other famous scholars have made great efforts for its construction. Although the Qing government and Baiyang government after the revolution of 1911, the treasury is empty, unable to maintain the library funds, but also the rich collection of ancient books library, because the country has accepted the deposit of museum status, it was a great progress in the development of library Chinese, philologist and bibliographer Miao Quan Sun, Mo Quan Sunday 1844-1919, who had overseen the founding of Jiangnan Library in Nanjing two years earlier, was called in to administer the new establishment. As in Jiangnan, his assistant Chen Qingyan took charge of most of the management. A private proposal made by Luo Zhenyu in the early 1900s stated that the library should be located in a place protected from both fire and floods, and at some distance from noisy markets. Following these recommendations, the Ministry of Education first chose the Deshengmen neighborhood inside the northern city wall, a quiet area with lakes. But this plan would have required purchasing several buildings. For lack of funds, Guanghua Temple was chosen as the library's first site. Guanghua Temple was a complex of Buddhist halls and shrines located near the northern bank of the Shichihai, but inconveniently located for readers, and too damp for long-term book storage. The Imperial Library of Peking would remain there until 1917. 
In 1916, the Ministry of Education ordered the library, every published book should be registered in Ministry of Interior and all collected by library. The function of National Library begins to manifest. Topic: <laughs> Later History. The National Peking Library opened to the public on the 27th of August 1912, a few months after the abdication of Puyi, r. 1908 to 12, the last emperor of the Qing dynasty. From then on, it was managed by the Ministry of Education of the Republic of China, 1912 to 49. The day before the library's opening, its new chief librarian Zhang Han, Zhang Han (1853–1935), argued that the National Peking Library was a research library and recommended the opening of a new library with magazines and new publications that could attract a more popular readership. In June 1913, such a branch library was opened outside Zanwoman Gate, and more than 2,000 books were transferred there from the main library. On 29 October 1913, because Guanghua Temple proved too small and inaccessible, the main library itself was closed. Pending the choice of a new site, the library charged one copper coin as a reading fee, whereas the Tianjin Library charged twice as much and the Shandong Public Library charged three coins. At first, readers could not borrow books, but sometime before 1918 borrowing became allowed. In 1916, the Ministry of Education of the Republic of China ordered that a copy of every Chinese publication should be deposited at the Metropolitan Library after being registered with the Copyright Bureau. After the Northern Expedition of Kuomintang in 1928, the National Peking Library changed its name to the National Piping Library and served as the National Library with the National Central Library in capital Nanking together. In 1931, the new library house in Wenjin Street near the Beihai Park opened. After the People's Republic of China was officially established in October 1949 and Peking became its capital, the National Piping Library was renamed National Peking Library. In 1951, the Ministry of Culture declared that its official English name would now be Peking Library. In 1978, two years after the end of the Cultural Revolution, the library started publishing the Bulletin of the Beijing Library, which quickly became one of China's most important library publications. In 1979, under an implementing accord regulating cultural exchanges between the U.S. and China, it vowed to exchange library material with the Library of Congress. To compensate for a lack of professionally trained librarians, starting in 1982 librarians from the NLC and other academic libraries spent periods of six months at the Library of Congress and the Yale University Library. To develop library science, the NLC established links with the Australian National University. In October 1987, the library moved to a modern building located north of Purple Bamboo Park in Haidian District. In 1999, it was officially renamed the National Library of China. November 2001, approved by the State Council, the National Library of the two phase of the project and the National Digital Library project formally approved. As an important part of the national information industry infrastructure, has been included in the National 15 plan. The national total investment of $1 billion, 235 million, began to put into effect. In 28 October 2003, the National Library ALEPH 500 Computer Integrated Management System has been put into operation, which laid the foundation for the National Library to enter the ranks of the world's advanced libraries. Topic. Collections Topic. Overview The National Library of China's collection is the largest in Asia. Its holdings of more than 36.45 million items as of December 2016 also make it one of the world's largest libraries. It houses official publications of the United Nations and foreign governments and a collection of literature and materials in over 115 languages. The library contains inscribed tortoise shells and bones, ancient manuscripts, and block-printed volumes. Among the most prized collections of the National Library of China are rare and precious documents and records from past dynasties in Chinese history. The original collection of the Metropolitan Library was assembled from several sources. 
In 1909 the imperial court gave the library the only surviving complete copy of the Siku Quanshu complete books of the four treasuries, an enormous compilation completed in 1782 that had been made in only four copies. That copy had been held at the Wenjin Pavilion of the Imperial Summer Resort in Chengdu. On orders from the Qing Ministry of Education, the ancient books, archives, and documents of the Grand Secretariat were also transferred to the new library. So was the collection of the Guojian or Imperial University, an institution that had been dismantled in 1905 at the same time as the Imperial Examination System. These imperial collections included books and manuscripts dating to the Southern Song 1127 The content of three private libraries from the Jiangnan area were donated under the supervision of Duanfang, the Viceroy of Langjiang, and the ministry arranged for the transfer from Gansu of what remained of the Dunhuang manuscripts. Finally, the court made great efforts to obtain rubbings of rare inscriptions on stone or bronze. Notable collections and items A collection of over 270,000 ancient and rare Chinese books, and over 1,640,000 traditional thread-bound Chinese books Over 35,000 inscriptions on oracle bones and tortoise shells from the Shang dynasty c. 16th–11th century BC Surviving tablets of the Zyping Stone Classics created by Kai Yang of the Eastern Han Dynasty 25 AD. More than 16,000 volumes of precious historical Chinese documents and manuscripts from the Mogo Caves in Dunhuang Old maps, diagrams, and rubbings from ancient inscriptions on various materials Copies of Buddhist sutras dating to the 6th century Original draft of Sima Guang's Zizi Tongjin Books and archives from imperial libraries of the Southern Song Dynasty 1127 including the works of Zhu Shi Oldest extant printed edition of the Wangdi Nijing ca. 100 BC, from the Jin Dynasty 1115 The most complete surviving Ming Dynasty 1368 copies of the Yongle Encyclopedia Great Canon of the Yongel Era. A copy of the Siku Quanshu, Complete Library of the Four Branches of Literature, completed in 1782 under the Qing Dynasty. Essential literary and books collection from the Qing Imperial Colleges and renowned private collectors. Topic: <laughs> Services and facilities. The north area of the main library is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on weekdays, and from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekends. The south area has been closed for renovation since May 2011. The children's library and the ancient books library are enclosed on weekends, and open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. As of 2013, the library maintains 14 branch offices, the latest of which is at the China Youth University for Political Sciences. Topic transportation The main library, located on Zongguanqin South Road in Beijing's Haidian District, can be accessed by bus or subway. Topic see also Libraries in the People's Republic of China Shanghai Library Nanjing Library List of Libraries List of National Libraries Chinese Library Classification CLC Archives in the People's Republic of China Topic References Topic Citations Topic Works Cited Bailey, Paul J. 1990, Reform the People, Changing Attitudes Towards Popular Education in Early 20th Century China, via Questia Subscription Required, Edinburgh, Edinburgh University Press, ISBN and 0 7486 Keenan, Barry C. 1994, Imperial China's Last Classical Academies, Social Change in the Lower Yangtze, 1864-1911, via Questia subscription required, Berkeley CA, Institute of East Asian Studies, UC Berkeley, ISBN 1-55729-041-5. Li, Zhizhong Li Ji Zhang, Chief Editor, 2009, Zongguo Guojia Tushugan Guanxi Zhang Guo Guo Jia Tu Shu Guan Guanxi History of the National Library of China in Chinese, Beijing, NLC Press, Guo Jia Tu Shu Guan Chu Banshi ISBN 978-7-5013-4070-5
Lin, Sharon Chien, 1983, Subscription Required, Education for Librarianship in China After the Cultural Revolution, Journal of Education for Librarianship, 24 1, 17–29, JSTOR 40322775. Lin, Sharon Chien, 1998, Libraries and Librarianship in China, via Questia Subscription Required, Westport CT and London, Greenwood Press, ISBN 0-313-28937-9, Joe, Me, Whites, Inkeni, 2002, Joe Me's Record of Clouds and Mist Passing Before One's Eyes, An Annotated Translation, Leiden, Brill, ISBN 9789004126053. Lin, Sharon Chien, 1991, Subscription Required, The Impact of American Librarianship on Chinese Librarianship in Modern Times 1840-1949, Libraries and Culture, 26 372 87 JSTOR 25542343. Fung, Margaret C. 1984, Subscription Required, Safekeeping of the National Piping Library's Rare Chinese Books at the Library of Congress 1941-1965, The Journal of Library History 1974-1987, 19 359-72, JSTOR 25541531. Lee, Huawei American Contributions to Modern Library Development in China, A Historic Review. Paper presented at the First China-United States Library Conference. Li, Guoqing Li Guo Ching 2001, History of the National Library of China, in Stam, David H. ed., International Dictionary of Library Histories, Chicago, Fitzroy Dearborn, pp. 499-502, ISBN 1579582443. CS1 maint, Extra Text, Editor's List link, Lin, Sharon Chien 1983, Subscription Required, Education for Librarianship in China After the Cultural Revolution, Journal of Education for Librarianship, 24 17–29, JSTOR 40322775. Lin, Sharon Chien 1985, Subscription Required, Historical Development of Library Education in China, The Journal of Library History 1974-1987, 24, 368-86, JSTOR 25541653. Prentice, Susan 1986, Subscription Required, The National Library of China, The View from Within, The Australian Journal of Chinese Affairs, 15-103-12, JSTOR 2158874. Yu, Priscilla C. 2001, Subscription Required, Leaning to One Side, The Impact of the Cold War on Chinese Library Collections, Libraries and Culture, 36 1, 253-66, JSTOR 25548906. U, Priscilla C., Davis, Donald G., Jr. 1998, Subscription Required, Arthur E. Bostwick and Chinese Library Development, A Chapter in International Cooperation, Libraries and Culture, 33 389-406, 4, JSTOR 25548664. Zhu, Peter F. The 13th of October 2009. Harvard College Library, China Form Pact, Harvard Yenching Library Collection to be digitized. Harvard Crimson. Topic. External links Media related to National Library of China at Wikimedia Commons.